Welcome, welcome all you Burbling.com members. Welcome to another English class provided for you by Verbling.com. Verbling.com is Hi. where you can connect and practice with a native speaker instantly. Hello, my name is Jeff Watson. I am the native speaker slash English teacher slash language student on duty this hour and for those participants wow we already have a full class lots Hello. of people want to work on their English <laughs> and improve their English a little bit this hour we are going to be reading we are going to be listening and most importantly I want to encourage all of the students to do some speaking, to express your ideas, and to develop your skill, to, do, to <clears throat> excuse me, to develop your ability to read something in English, to understand it, and then to be able to express it in your own words. Uh, whether it's um, whether we call it. Uh, paraphrasing the information that you have read or putting the information in your own words these are the skills that uh, these are the real skills of communicating in a foreign language can you listen to English understand it and then express the same ideas in your own words so hopefully that's what we're going to be working on together, working together this hour. So what I would like to do is just to ask everyone, please, if the students could mute their microphones so that our virtual classroom is quiet. So everybody really needs to keep their microphones muted the whole class uh, because um, we end up getting a little bit of background noise and a little bit of sound coming from people. So I'm trying to mute people's microphones so that our virtual classroom is quiet. So we are going to be reading uh, this hour about a program that was recently uh, started in the country of Nepal, uh, which is a, a country that is dealing with high levels of poverty on uh, and and they hope to learn more about the poverty situation in their country and to do something about it to help the people and so what I would like to do is to say hello to everyone I would like everyone to please introduce themselves to the group and could you please also give us an idea of something that people, something that the governments um, can do, something that the international community can do to help people who are poor, to help uh, people who are living in poverty. All right, great. And so I'd like to start by saying, Anastasia, hello, how are you? Hello. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Uh, I'm Anastasia. Uh, or Anastasia, uh, Anastasia, as you want. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I'm from Russia. Um, what I would like uh, to tell about pov poverty, right? Please, yes. Um, I don't even know. Maybe uh, we need to change our mind uh, to uh, for people who live on the on the streets. Um, we. Uh, and yeah, government. I, I'm here to help you. I, I'm here to help you. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and government, uh, they think only about uh, about uh, the self, and uh, they they just show uh, pe 
they show to people that they help um, uh, poor, poor, poor people, right. but mm, um, but nothing happens, really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, All right. At least in our country, in my country. Oh well, I I, I think that that's a, a problem internationally with politicians is that. To a certain extent, politicians need to focus on getting reelected and staying in power. And so, yeah, it's hard to do uh, good things and stay in power sometimes. Thank you for your opinion, and, and you express that very well. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Christoph, hello, how are you? Hi, Joe. Hi, everyone. Good, uh, good evening. I'm Christoph. I'm from France. And, uh, uh, I have something to say about the poverty in the world. Uh, I think uh, the, most of the government uh, should be uh, should think about uh, uh, poor people and uh, and stop thinking uh, about the selfishness. Okay, selfishness. Yes. Uh, stop selfishness. being so selfish. Yes. Hmm. So uh, yes, there is a lot of money we can uh, we can deal with uh, this problem, but uh, everyone is uh, selfish. Selfish, yeah. I, uh, and we are using the Google. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. We uh, we are using the Verbling chat box. It's working perfectly today. So I put in. Um, sometimes I don't. Uh, express the same ideas as the students so uh, I'm not trying to change what you say I'm just trying to show the grammar involved in making statements so we need to change our attitudes toward poor people and stop being so selfish that's the word right yes. excellent thank you uh, and I would thank you for your uh, your topic they are always ah. uh, very interesting okay well no uh, great listen uh, as a native speaker I can look on the internet and find anything that students are interested in and I can change that into a uh, English class because to learn English you need to read English you need to listen to English and you need to speak English so the internet is um, a limitless source of interesting information so yes, if you have my contact information you can send me ideas about things that you're interested in because whatever you want to talk about I can find it on the internet in five minutes <laughs> that's uh, it's okay, easy for do. me as a native speaker to search the internet so great thank you okay, uh, Hasim hello welcome Hasim are hello? you there? Hello? Yes yeah, welcome. How are you? I'm fine thank uh, you uh, I am from Syria uh, for this tool, I want to to, uh, to say uh, that um, the better solution to the, to reduce or uh, the poverty in uh, in this world to uh, to overcome the cor corruption, you know, yeah, and uh, yeah, 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 and uh, put a good scheme or a good plans. Uh, to educate uh, this kind of uh, uh, people in our uh, world, uh, uh, I think uh, that is the uh, important thing to uh, um, to um, uh, to achieve. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, really well said. And uh, that reminds me because uh, have you downloaded the file from the Verbling.com website? Maybe you have. <laughs> so yeah, uh, people, yeah. people can go now to the verbling.com website. Please go to the live classes page and look for the information about this class and you will see a link called file GW and I'm sorry, which one is it? Is it 25 or 26? Something like that. 26. Uh, it's 26. Thank you. Um, I, I use a different copy for the screen share. So please download that uh, transcript from the British Broadcasting Corporation and you will be able to follow along with the reading and the listening. 
all right? And I put in the chat box something for students. I know this is a difference between English and Spanish, but in English, when you are talking about general concepts of ideas like poverty, love, beauty, truth, if you're talking about the general concept, do not use the. The in English makes things very specific. So if you're speaking of general things, don't use the. So you talk about truth, beauty, honesty, uh, those kinds of things. All right, great. So Hermione, hello, how are you? Hello, Jeff. I am fine, thank you. Good. Um, Nice to see you again. Uh, I am Hermine from Armenia, and um, I think about this stuff. <laughs> like, um, for example, the uh, first thing I want to say is that government must um, uh, stop corruption, as has uh, said, and try to make study um, fr free for free uh, uh, yeah. in uh, in colleges or at universities. And uh, does they will have the prof uh, the professional uh, um, resources uh, who will try to create some uh, places for people to work to have the job? And from my side, I am foreigner, not from Nepal. Uh, I would say people who are, have money, they can uh, some aids. They can send some aids to them to help them from the poverty. Right, some aid. Some aid, uh, it, okay. It, it's, uh, it's a non-countable, so aid. To send, okay. uh, and we use the term foreign, foreign aid when one government uh, donates resources to another country. Okay, great, thank you. Igor, hello, welcome. Hi, how are you? Great. Uh, my name is Igor, I am from the Republic of Moldova. And uh, I think that um, uh, government uh, should uh, to look why people are um, uh, poor, uh, what cause them, um, what uh, they or um, either they don't have a job, either they or they are I don't know. Well, they lack education, for example. Yes, and uh, to find out what is the cause and to help every people uh, with every problem, to, to help uh, that people with every problem that they have. For yes. example, if they don't have a job, to offer them job opportunities and they will go and work and they will have money and they will spend mm -hmm. money and, and they will grow economy of the country. Yeah, they will, um, yeah, grow the economy, or that's not what we say, sorry, they will uh, uh, improve, improve the economy. Improve. Yeah, yes. great. No, uh, excellent points, and um, I'm going to move on. Manuel, welcome. Hello, uh, good afternoon from Spain. Uh, from my point of view, I think that uh, most of the politicians in rich countries uh, only think in themselves. So we should vote for parties who have uh, poverty and ecological policies. So the, the problem at the end uh, is from, from the citizens who has the right to vote uh, and, and that's it. Nowadays in my country, my government is cutting uh, the expenses in, in cooperation. Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand the last part. Uh, the government is it's, cutting... Is, is cutting the cooperation, the aid and cooperation uh, expenses. Ah. ah, okay, right. So uh, your government is going to offer other countries less foreign aid. Yes, that's right. it. For okay. Night. Yeah, and just the pronunciation of policies with an e sound at the end. Policies. Great. Policies. Okay. And thank you. Policies. Mates, are you there? Oh, you need to turn on your microphone. You may need to click on the icon of the microphone. Yes. Great. Please welcome. 
Uh, well, my name is not uh, Mateusz. It's oh. just my uh, friend Mateusz Akent. My, yeah, because I'm not Abus, so I've had some problems to use it. Uh -huh. And my oh. name is Michał. I am 15 years old. Uh, I come from Poland. Mm, so something about poverty. Uh, well, I think uh, government won't change anything. Uh, they just care about their own money. And I think people should organize uh, together to do something good. Mm, I think a good solution uh, are charity organizations. Uh, yeah. Sorry, a good solution is what? Uh, charity organizations. Ah, okay, yeah. right. Charity organizations, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I think good. people should uh, try to do something common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and could you please uh, write your name uh, and send it to me in the chat box? I, I sorry, I didn't understand how to pronounce your name. Thank you. And I put in the chat box the word opportunities. It's just I really like that word opportunities. Uh, I think it's it's a, a nice word in English to give people opportunities. Uh, Mustafa, go ahead, please. Uh, in my, uh, my view, uh, the, organiz the social organization uh, start to uh, collect the, uh, the all poverty people, all poverty, uh, the poor, yeah, then the poor divide people. them uh, to people who can work, two people, yes. mm -hmm. uh, people who can work, and people who can uh, who can't. Uh, then the people who can't uh, give him uh, money. And the people who can uh, work, uh, search and find the uh, uh, and uh, a good work uh, for them, uh, and uh, place to uh, and uh, place uh, for them. And just the last phrase <laughs> and a place for them, or for them, yes, uh, for living. Ah, oh, okay. So a place to live and provide them a place to live. Yeah. Okay. So to identify the people who can work and give them uh, a, a job. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. And people um, who can work, who uh, can work, uh, get, provide a job and can uh, provide a money. Right. Uh, sure. Excellent. I uh, well well said. And Omar, hello. Welcome. Oh. Yes, could you please uh, introduce yourself, Omar? Okay, my name is Omar. I'm a pharmacy student. Uh, property is part <laughs> of our living. We can't just omit it of our life. I believe that we, as a nation, we have to fight against economic and social disparities. We have to be as one. However, this kind of talk is only correct theoretically. When it's real life, rich are rich and poor and poor. We can't just omit the poor people out of our life. They will be always in our life. However, um, uh, but nevertheless, we can increase probability in, 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 the life, in the life. I think that the international organizations such as the UN or other uh, uh, other organizations such as uh, Red Crescent or the Red Cross should help uh, uh, the poor people not by giving them food or something, but with giving them seeds, such as teaching them or something like that. There is a Japanese code that say, "Don't give me a fish, but teach me how to hunt." Well. Because yeah. for the last de two or three decades, or not the decade, for the last uh, century, we've been just giving people money and money and money. And then what? All the money was gone, and it was not useful at all. So I believe we have to edu educate them, not just giving men them money. Awesome. It's nice to, uh, nice to see you again, Omar. I didn't recognize you. so. Uh, awesome. You're, I always love your comments. You express your ideas very well. I, I, I just put the word to eliminate. That's a, that's a good option. So uh, we, we can't eliminate poverty 
and yeah, so great. So let's let's start our reading. And plus, uh, sorry, I just need everyone to please keep their microphones uh, uh, silenced or muted, please, so so that our classroom is quiet. And I'm going to bring up the screen share so that we can start reading. And um, let me see. I'll bring this up. Use the. I think uh, he has a problem. Yes, he has a problem. <laughs> ah, he came again. Okay, it's fine. You back? Yeah, <laughs> he came <come> back. <laughs> He's back. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry for the disconnection. Uh, let's keep going. So I was just uh, complimenting Omar on the way he expresses himself and the great ideas that he has, in my opinion. And now I would like to use the screen share. So I'm going to try that again. And Anastasia, uh, could you please start our reading? Do you see yes, the text on the screen? OK. Yes, could I you see. please read this? Yes. Uh, Nepal's poverty battle. Battle. <laughs> Rob. In today's program, we have news of uh, a pioneering scheme to help families in one of the world's poorest countries. Uh, Vera, yes, that country is Nepal, where it is estimated 40% uh, of the population live in poverty. So they have poor living standards and do not have access to facilities that some of us take for granted. But now, uh, bad do things have to be to live in poverty. Okay, let's stop there. Fantastic. Now, uh, there's. Uh, I wanted to help you with the pronunciation of the two words. So, battle, ah, battle, and battle. pi, pioneering with an I sound. Pioneering. Okay. Battle. Yeah. P pioneering. And I wanted to point out the expression to take something for granted. Could someone just turn on their microphone and say, Hi, Jeff, if you can explain what taking something for granted means? I think this is an important. Mm -hmm. Someone, please, to take something for granted. Okay, this is good. So uh, I'm going to help you out. Yes, Hermione? Is it uh, when you have something uh, take for granted? When you have something without doing anything? Okay. Yes. Sure. And you and so. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Go ahead, please, Mustafa. Not appreciate. That's right. Not so appreciate you... or not realize how much uh, something mean to you. Yes. You don't realize how important it is. 
Now, I can speak for myself. I'm from Canada. And so, for example, in Canada, we have, in most places in Canada, we have huge amounts of beautiful, clean, fresh water. And so, I take fresh water, clean, fresh water, for granted. We get a lot of rain, and so I don't appreciate it. I don't think that fresh, clean water is special. I take it for granted. But I know that many other people who live in other countries, that is a, a luxury. That, that's something that is very um, limited. And, and so that's the idea of taking something for granted. Probably because you've had it all your life. And so you don't realize that other people uh, think it's valuable. Or if you lose it, then you realize how important it was. So that's, that's a good um, phrase in English that, um, that I recommend to people uh, to, to know what taking something for granted means. All right, and Christoph, this next selection of text, please. Yes. Uh, it's a good question. The government in Nepal has launched a new scheme to access, to assess the, next, the extent of poverty in the country. In other words, to find out how bad it, is, uh, it really is. It's very keen to find out exactly how many people are living below the poverty line. Or in other words, to work out who the poorest people are. Okay, great. Excellent job. Just wanted to help you with launched with a T sound as quick as possible. Launched. Has and launched. yeah. And uh let me see. Um yeah, and, and the phrasal verb to find out. Uh can somebody give me a synonym? To discover. Uh, a, yeah, to discover. Excellent. That's a good synonym. Fantastic. And to be keen is a British term that I don't use, but that's someone to be very motivated and enthusiastic. So the government is very motivated to find out exactly how many people are living below the poverty line. Okay, and now uh, what I wanted to do at this point was just to switch documents. So I'm just going to um, turn off the screen share. I'm going to open up another document, and again, I'm just cutting and pasting materials from the internet and so I wanted the next person to read uh, some information about Nepal and uh, just to make sure that people knew where it was and some information about it so let me see if I can bring this up okay I hope that people can see that and uh, Hazim, could you read the information that's on the screen now, please? Okay. Uh, with, it is an ancient culture and uh, Himalayas uh, as the uh, backdrop land located Nepal has a romantic image, image. Uh, but it's one of the world's poorest countries. Yes, and, and sorry, I, I just I don't have this lined up correctly. So there is the map uh, between, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, we have India, Bhutan, and China, and then of course along here are the Himalayas, and with Mount Everest um, is what we call it. And uh, in North American culture, the idea of going to Nepal to meditate, to see Mount Everest, to go to their capital Kathmandu, which which sounds funny in English, in our opinion, it's a it's a fun name Kathmandu, and, and so um, yes, it has a very romantic image. And uh, Hasam, could you continue with this little uh, piece of okay. text, please? Uh, rural poverty uh, in Nepal dissipate some progress uh, in poverty uh, uh, reduction in uh, recent years Nepal uh, remains one of the poorest countries in the world over 30 percent of Nepal Nepalis uh, live below the poverty line of uh, 
twelve uh, USA dollars per uh, person per month. Okay, so that is uh, thirty percent of the population lives on twelve dollars per month, and. Uh, uh, sorry, I just wanted to help you with the pronunciation of despite. 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 Mm -hmm. despite yeah. Okay, and I'm going to move down to uh, a, a, another uh, bit of text. And yeah. uh, to Hermione, could you read this for us, please? Yes, of course. About 80% of Nepal's population live in rural areas and depend on subsist subsistence farming for their Livelihoods. Livelihoods. Oops. <laughs> Livelihoods. Household food, secu food security and poor nutrition are still major concerns in rural areas. Most households have little or no access to basic social services such as primary health care, education, clean drinking water, and sanitation services. Rural poor Poor people generally have large families, are landless, or have very small land holdings, with high rates of illiteracy, and are also concentrated concentrated in spe in specific ethnic, caste, and minority groups, particularly those who those of the lowest castle, the de Dalits, and indigenous peoples. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't help you with the pronunciation of that. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Small fragmented subsistence farming is a characteristic of Nepalese ag agriculture, and the average land holding is only 0 .0 0 0.8 or 0.8 Good. hectares. Mm -hmm. Life is a constant struggle for survival. The most Vulnerable and marginal, marginalized Mar groups. Marginalized. Are, marginalized groups are the lowest social castes, indigenous people and women. Okay, so livelihoods. We pronounce this word caste. The e cast. is silent. Caste mm -hmm. and marginalized. People. Marginalized. And, what and, does and so, it mean, marginalized? Yeah, is, is there someone who knows what that means? To be marginalized? Uh, I discriminated. discriminated. Yeah, discriminate, discriminated against. Uh, Christoph, did you have a comment? Yes, uh, the same idea, I think. Yeah, and, okay. and somewhat isolated, uh, pushed mm -hmm. to the side. Yeah. Uh, How's Neglect, can we say neglect? Ne neglected? Yeah. Something like separated yeah. from yeah. others. Hermione, separated, yeah. So discriminated against, neglected, yes, separated. Right. And these castes, uh, the, they have a, a caste system there, apparently. Okay, and then there are lots and lots of, there is, lots of vocabulary, so illiteracy and being landless, yeah, okay, and Nepal is a landlocked country, so they do not have direct access to the ocean, okay, so I wanted to, uh, just to make sure that people knew about where we were talking, um, about the country that we were talking about, and so I'm going to open up our document again and put that on the screen share. So let's continue to prepare for listening to this story. And so I'm going to move that down to the next selection. Ah, and this program always starts with a question. So let's do that now. Igor, could you read this next selection of text, please? Yes. Rob. Uh, so here is the question for the program. According to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, which is the poorest country in the which which is the poorest country in the world, is it the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, Burkina Faso? Uh, Vera. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Vera, uh, I would take a guess that is Malawi. 
Rob, Malawi B, uh, Malawi B. Well, uh, we will find out if you are right at the end of the program. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, just in English, this is very, very common. I, I say this every day to take a guess. And I always say, well, my guess is this, and my guess is that. And um, so you, this is something sure very common. My go. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Okay, we can say my go. Uh, okay. No, I don't, I don't understand. Sorry. My go, like this. My... I wrote it in the chat box, Google. Yes, great. Now, but a, a guess is when you don't know something for sure, but you're going to say the answer, even though you're not sure of it. Okay? Now, to, yeah, to take, to take a guess. And, and so that, I recommend that people look at that word. It's, it's a good one. I use it every day. Um, so I hope people can hear me. <laughs> Manuel, are yes. you ready? Yeah, yes, great. I am. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody was so quiet. That makes me worried. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, please. But before then, let's talk uh, more about this new shame by the Nepalese government to assess the extent of poverty in the country. Vera. It's a massive undertaking because officials will be going from house to house across the country gathering data. Rob, it could take some time, but once this data or information is collected, what is the government going to do with it? Okay, excellent. And I put the English pronunciation of the word scheme in the chat box. Scheme. Uh, you know, I'm sorry about English, I apologize. <laughs> so sometimes the CH, well obviously sometimes it's pronounced correctly with the CH sound in church. Sometimes with the words borrowed from French we use the SH sound like champagne and in this case the CH has a K sound. Sk Scheme. All right, great. Let's continue. Uh, what is undertaking? Ah, undertaking. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to look at the uh, synonyms here with the Microsoft Word. Commitment. And so, it, it, yeah, all right. No, so in, in this case, uh, no, thank you. Uh, it has to do with commitment, absolutely. That is a verb. To undertake is to commit. But in this context, it's a noun. It's a Project. massive undertaking. Project. Project. Exactly. Job. Yeah. Mission. Mission. Yeah. Task. Task. Yeah. So uh, in this case, it's a big job that the government is trying to do. They're literally going to send people to every house uh, gathering information. So great. So it, it's a massive undertaking. And that phrase we use quite a bit in English. So uh, some words fit well together. And so uh, to, I don't think we ever say a big undertaking. We never say that. We, uh, we say a massive undertaking. Obligation. So, sorry? Obligation. Well, uh, thank no? you. Uh, I'm not sure. No. No. In, in this context, it's a project. It's a job. It's, uh, right, a task. That, that's the idea in this. And, and so, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see your name in the chat box. Uh, the young man from, I, I think you're from Poland. Ma Mates uh, is your friend. <laughs> you need to turn on your microphone. Ah, Michael. Uh, so you need to turn on your microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Could you read the text for us, please? Okay. Uh, Vera, let's hear from the BBC uh, Jill McIverin, who can tell us a bit more about what is going on. BBC correspondent Jill McIverin. Officials in Nepal are starting a massive task, going from house to house across the country, gathering data about each family's income, assets, and how much food they have to eat. 
they are trying to identify those living in extreme poverty, people who go hungry for either three, six or nine months of each year. Wow. Okay, excellent job. Perfect pronunciation. And so, Mustafa, we're going to move ahead here. If anybody has any questions or comments, you're always welcome to just turn on your microphone and say hi, Jeff. Mustafa, could you go ahead and read this next text for us? Mustafa, are you there? Okay, we, we don't hear from you, Mustafa. Omar, could you please read this text for us? They, they later allocate a new poverty card, which will make these families eligible in the future for the government subsidies. 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 Cheaper food, education, and health care. Official X said about a quarter of the population to be issued with them. Right? So, uh, we heard that the government is trying to identify those living in extreme poverty. So, the worst kind of poverty. Yes, the definition of extreme poverty. Thank you. Let me help you with uh, the pronunciation allocate. Allocate? Yeah. Eligible. Eligible? Uh, see, now uh, the stress is on the first syllable. Eligible. Eligible. Okay. Yeah. Eligible. Eligible. Good. And uh, subsidies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the stress is important with eligible. Uh, eligible. Okay. <laughs> Great. All Which right. Means? And so, sorry? Uh, eligible means eligible uh, and anyone I'm gonna look up the uh, so eligible? you are yes uh, eligible uh, qualified yes uh, you you have so there are families that will receive money or yeah. subsidies and so are they are are they qualified to receive it are they entitled to receive it? Um, authorized? Yeah. So are are they the people who, uh, according to the government program, will they be able to um, receive the government help for cheaper food, education, and health care? Right. Uh, Great. Uh, teacher? Yes. Uh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, please, Mustafa. You're here. Uh, I will start from where? Uh, they, no, uh, yeah. lit? no, no, sorry, Mustafa. I'm going to move it ahead to the next uh, piece of text. Give me one second. Okay. Yeah, we, we okay. already read that selection. So could you please read this selection for us, Mustafa? Uh, Vera? Yes, please. Uh, Vera, it will be finding uh, it will be finding out about people's income, uh, their assets. Yeah, sorry, he's uh, gone there, and so I'm going to move back to Anastasia. Could you please read this text for us? Um, yes. Vera, it will be finding out about people's income, uh, their assets, so what they own, and how much food they have to eat. Those who are in extreme poverty have been defined as people who go without food for between three, uh, three and nine months each year. Okay, great. I'm going to move on. So people's assets are the things that they own, things of value. Uh, and uh, Christoph, could you please read this selection of text? Yes, of course. Those people who fall into this category will later be allocated property cards, which give these families subsidies or Sub financial subsidies. Subsidies, okay, mm, uh, or financial support for food, 
education and health care. And the scale could help a quarter of the population. So it sounds like a good idea. All right, great. And that's a good phrase in English. Something sounds like a good idea. You can practice that phrase. And uh, we are with Hazem. Yeah, wrong. Please. Yeah, it does. Many people have welcomed the idea, but there are challenges to in running such a big scheme. Let's uh, hear from the PPC, PPC uh, GL, uh, uh, MC uh, Give the Ring again. Uh, see if you can hear what the challenges are. Uh, BBC, okay. yeah. So, sorry, please continue. Thank you. BBC uh, correspondent, Jill uh, uh, MC, uh, giving the governments have been uh, talk, talking for years about uh, introducing a scheme like this. Okay, great. And the last name, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Mick, the MC gives a mick sound, so mcgivering, Mc, mcgivering, yeah, I, it would be my I, I guess. Just, right? yeah, Mc, yeah, yeah, exactly, mcgivering. Okay. Yeah, I, do, I right. said to they are uh, uh, two <laughs> words, not uh, the same word. Ah, so, no, it's uh, it's a last name. No, that's fine. Yeah. I, I think it's a, uh, I think that, that shows that it is a, a name that originally came from Scotland. And so, Hermione? Could you read this next selection of text for us, please? These are yes. the words of the, uh, of the BBC's correspondent. Mm -hmm. Those involved are de delighted that the process has finally started, although this is only the first phase and no, one's no one is sure how many months it will take just to sur survey the whole country. They describe it as pioneering, but also admit there will be challenges. Making sure people give accurate information, for example, preventing bias against different ethnic groups and protecting the program from fraud and corruption. The best judges, of course, will be Nepal's most poor, whose burden this new national program is supposed to ease. Great. And just with pioneering, pi. Pioneer. Oh, okay. Pioneer. No, it's okay. <laughs> Pioneer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and and do, do people understand the idea behind that word, pioneering? It's it's new. Yeah, yeah. people. To be first. Yeah, to be first. The yeah, and and pioneers were the first people. Intelligent. Sorry. Intelligent people. Intelligent In, people. Well, sorry. No, that that's a little different. Just the first people, uh, but then. This is not referring to the people, it's the idea or the program as being new, revolutionary, original, we say groundbreaking, innovative, founding. Okay, so those are some ideas. Okay, and we have a little bit more. It's quite a, quite a bit of reading, but everyone's doing a wonderful job. Igor, could you please read this next selection of text? Yes. Vera. So there are a number of challenges in running this scheme. Uh, they include. They incl uh, how to pronounce include? In Correct. Include. They include relying on people to give accurate. Uh, accurate. How to pronounce? A accurate. Accurate information and preventing. And this what bias? Bias. Bias. Bias or. Uh, but this word or prejudice? Prejud yes, good. Prejudice. Prejudice against different ethnic groups. Rob, yes, uh, there are many different ethnic groups in Nepal, so it's important to make sure that one isn't favored over another. Okay, fantastic. And just uh, the words, uh, the letters there, the E's are silent in all of those words. Scheme. Scheme accurate. accurate. Prejudice. 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 <laughs> Prejudice. The, uh, this is the, the J sound. Prejudice. Prejudice. Okay, Prejudice. perfect. 
Let's move on. Uh, sorry, I clicked that back. Oh, just so that you know, these words here that are underlined in red, it's because I'm using the uh, American spell check. Uh, these words are spelled with the British spelling, and actually some of them the Canadian spelling. So uh, those are some of the differences between the spelling in Britain and the United States. And so, uh, who's, who's next? Uh, we have um, Manuel. All right. Finally, there is a risk uh, that uh, there could be fraud and corruption because of the economic advantage on offer to the poorest families. Vera. Of course, the other challenge is how many months it will take and no one is really sure especially because of the mountainous terrain that some people live in. Yeah, so uh, amazing uh, terrain. And uh, advantages. Advantages. It's the plural. And so one advantage, two advantages. There's an extra syllable there. And here we go. Uh, if I can move on to Michael. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, Rob, but people seem delighted or happy that after years of talking, something is uh, finally being done to tackle poverty in Nepal. Vera, but who can really tell if it's successful or not? Rob, well, the best judges, as we heard, are Nepal's poor, whose lives uh, may be made a little easier. Okay, great. And and just to just to help you, uh, these are. The people's lives. Okay. So that those are that's the noun lives. Mm -hmm. All right. And where are we here? Oh wow. Oh yes, the question. So does anybody have an idea of according to the International Monetary Fund? It looks like uh, Malawi. Uh, what? Oh, no, is not. It looks Congo. like the poorest country is the Democratic Republic of Congo. What, what I want to do is move on quickly. We're running out of time. And so at this point, I hope that you have downloaded the document from either the BBC website or the verbling.com website. I'm going to unplug my microphone so I will not be able to speak to you. And I actually, I can't hear the podcast, but it's okay. I've heard it before. And um, I'm going to play the podcast for you, which is approximately six minutes. So I'm going to start playing it right now. Uh, before, Joe, I have just a question. Yes, I wrote ahead, it in the in the chat, uh, in the chat, Google chat. Could, yes. Could you respond each? Okay, sure, great. And Absolutely. I will write another. Excellent. You'll another. write another. Okay, okay. great. Six Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com Hello and welcome to Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Rob. And hello, I'm Vera. In today's programme we have news of a pioneering scheme to help families in one of the world's poorest countries. Yes, that country is Nepal, where it is estimated 40% of the population live in poverty. So they have poor living standards and do not have access to facilities that some of us take for granted. But how bad do things have to be to live in poverty? Mm, well, it's a good question. The government in Nepal has launched a new scheme to assess the extent of poverty in the country. In other words, to find out how bad it really is. It's very keen to find out exactly how many people are living below the poverty line, or in other words, to work out who the poorest people are. We'll find out more about this scheme shortly, but as always we like to start the program with a question to think about. So here is the question. According to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, which is the poorest country in the world? Is it the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi or Burkina Faso? I would take a guess uh, that it's Malawi. Malawi B. OK, well, we'll find out if you're right at the end of the programme. But before then, let's talk more about this new scheme by the Nepalese government to assess the extent of poverty in the country. 
it's a massive undertaking because officials will be going from house to house across the country gathering data. It could take some time, but once this data or information is collected, what are the governments going to do with it? Let's hear from the BBC's Jill McGivering, who can tell us a bit more about what is going on. Officials in Nepal are starting a massive task, going from house to house across the country, gathering data about each family's income, assets and how much food they have to eat. They're trying to identify those living in extreme poverty, people who go hungry for either three, six or nine months of each year. They'll later allocate new poverty cards, which will make these families eligible in the future for government subsidies, cheaper food, education and health care. Officials expect about a quarter of the population to be issued with them. So we heard that the government is trying to identify those living in extreme poverty, so the worst kind of poverty. It will be finding out about people's income, their assets, so what they own, and how much food they have to eat. Those who are in extreme poverty have been defined as people who go without food for between three and nine months each year. Those people who fall into this category will later be allocated poverty cards which give these families subsidies or financial support for food, education and health care. And the scheme could help a quarter of the population, so it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? But many people have welcomed the idea, but there are challenges too in running such a big scheme. Let's hear from the BBC's Jill McGivering again. See if you can hear what the challenges are. The government's been talking for years about introducing a scheme like this. Those involved are delighted that the process has finally started, although this is only the first phase, and no one's sure how many months it will take just to survey the whole country. They describe it as pioneering, but also admit there'll be challenges, making sure people give accurate information, for example, preventing bias against different ethnic groups, and protecting the programme from fraud and corruption. The best judges, of course, will be Nepal's most poor, whose burden this new national programme is supposed to ease. So there are a number of challenges in running this scheme. They include relying on people to give accurate information and preventing bias or prejudice against different ethnic groups. Yes, there are many different ethnic groups in Nepal, so it's important to make sure that one isn't favoured over another. Finally, there's a risk that there could be fraud and corruption because of the economic advantages on offer to the poorest families. Of course, the other challenge is how many months it will take, and no one is really sure, especially because of the mountainous terrain that some people live in. But people seem delighted or happy that after years of talking, something is finally being done to tackle poverty in Nepal. But who can really tell if it's successful or not? Well, the best judges, as we heard, are Nepal's poor, whose lives may be made a little easier. Well, something that isn't easy is your quiz question, Rob. <laughs> really? Well, earlier I asked you, according to the IMF, which is the world's poorest country? A. The Democratic Republic of Congo, B. Malawi, or C. Burkina Faso? And I said Malawi. Was I right? I'm afraid you were wrong. The answer is actually the Democratic Republic of Congo. OK, it's almost time to go now, but before we do, Vera, please could you remind us of some of the vocabulary that we've heard today? Yes, of course. We heard pioneering, the extent, data, allocated, subsidies, bias, corrupt terrain. Thanks, Vera. We hope you've enjoyed today's programme. Please join us again soon for more 6-Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. Bye for now. Bye. That was 6-Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. As we all know by now, this year's flu season... Hi, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. My volume yes. might be low. Yeah. Yeah. And... and so great. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn off the screen share. I can say goodbye to everyone. We're, we're out of time. Just quickly, Christoph, you sent me a couple of questions in the Google Hangout chat box. 
Yeah. And so um, what we what what we do is during the classes, the verbling classes, is we use the verbling chat box. So the icon is a blue or purple square with a V in it, and it says verbling classes. But if you need to click on that to go to the verbling chat box, and uh, your two questions were. Um, uh, about yeah, the please. Canadian accent, yeah. Um, so let me see if I still have that. Yeah. So uh, Canadians, most Canadians speak with exactly the same accent as Americans. So, uh, and then you were asking about the phrase in English, "so that." Now, this does not have a definition. It's a phrase that's used to connect two parts of sentences or to connect two ideas together in order that uh, there, there are lots of other variations. So my advice would be to Google it and, and translate it into your language because so that does not have uh, a definition. It has a function. You can say, for so example, the government of so Nepal. That difficult. Mm -hmm. Is it so that difficult? Sorry, no, that's a different use of the word so. It's so difficult is different. So, so that has a different function. The, the government of Nepal is going to uh, interview all of the people in the country so that they will know how many poor people live in the country. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> no, those, those words are impossible to define because they don't have a definition. They have a function to connect two ideas. So you're doing A so that you will be able to have the result B. So they're going to interview all of the people in the country so that they will know the true scope or size of the poverty issue in their country. All right. What about so, uh, on offer to? Sorry. What about on offer to? Uh, in offer to? On offer to, yes. We, we... Yeah. Let me see what that one is. Uh, you're sending it into the other chat box. No, I, I was sent. Yeah. Down. Okay. Good. Try and use the verbling chat box. And offer to. Well, uh, an offer, that is a word. In, in the context of the sentence, I think that um, this is an offer. They are providing an opportunity or an offer to people. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the context of the sentence will, will help you. But just the noun, an offer. The government is giving an offer to the poor people of the country to obtain cheap uh, food or health care. All right? So I, I'm just going to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, the class goodbye. is over. Take We've care. gone over time. Uh, thank you so much for your participation. Great job with your reading and thank your Thank you very much, teacher. Oh, Congratulations. Teacher <laughs> yes, please. Please call me Bye. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Okay. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. I, I'm going to be Goodbye. singing in my next class, so stay tuned. Yeah, I want to join it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.